Okay, hi. We're going to be talking about atoms today, and atoms are the stuff everything is made of. Hopefully, some of this will be review for you, and some of it will be new, but if at any point you get confused or you have a question, just make a note of that on your notes and bring those to class on Thursday, and we'll have time to talk about it. So, taking a look at atoms in more detail, we'll make a flowchart. Atoms are made up of two major areas. The innermost area is called the nucleus, in which you find these particles called protons and others called neutrons. Surrounding the nucleus, you find this area called the electron cloud. We'll talk more later about why it's a cloud. Um, but the electron cloud can then be subdivided into smaller regions called energy levels. And even then within those energy levels, you have even smaller regions called orbitals. And it's within those orbitals that you actually find the electrons zooming around the nucleus. And we'll talk about each one of these individually. So, atoms. They're the smallest unit that is retains the properties. that You know, the smallest unit of gold that's still gold. If you get smaller than that, then you're talking about individual protons and neutrons and electrons. So, if it's still an atom of gold, then it still has to... Um, it still has these parts, and it acts like any other atom of gold. And all elements are composed of atoms, so the elements, you find that list of the elements on the periodic table, and each one of those, as they appear on the periodic table, are individual, um, made up of individual atoms, and they can't be subdivided into anything smaller. Um, atoms of the same element have the same chemical properties, chemical properties being... Um, things that they react with. Okay, so if an atom of sodium reacts with uh, water, for example, then any atom of sodium is going to have that same reaction with water. And here's a key point, you have to know this. All atoms of an element contain the same number of protons. The protons determine what the atom is. Okay, all right, now let's take a look at the nucleus. There's protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Protons have a positive charge. Neutrons have no charge. You can't say they have a neutral charge because that implies that some sort of charge is neutral. Um, so no charge on the neutrons. <clears throat> Most of the mass of an atom, over 99% of the mass of an atom, is found in the nucleus. That's where the protons and the neutrons are. And here's a cool analogy. If an, if an atom were the size of a football field, so consider like, um, you know, professional indoor football stadium, um, the nucleus would be a marble on the 50-yard line. Think about it. That's just crazy. But true, it's kind of cool. All right, so now let's talk about protons. We talked about this already. They're found in the nucleus. They have a positive charge. And the reason we say have a relative charge of plus one is because when we talk about electrons, they're going to have a relative charge of minus one, and they have to be able to cancel each other out. So just they have a positive charge, and each proton has one positive charge. Vocabulary um, term here, really important. The atomic number, which is the number that is used to organize the periodic, type, periodic table, is equal to the number of protons. So, and that goes back to what we talked about a minute ago, in that every atom of a spe specific element have the same number of protons. So, atomic number, number of protons. And this is what I just said, the number of protons is specific to that element. If you change the protons, you change what it is. <clears throat> Neutrons, again, found in the nucleus. No charge. Here's another vocabulary word for you, isotope. An isotope is a difficult concept for people to kind of grasp at this stage, but we'll talk about it. If you change the number of neutrons, what you're doing is you're changing the mass of the atom. However, it does not change what the atom is, because remember, protons determine the element. But you can change the number of neutrons without changing the element. But what you do change is the mass, and each one of those different massed atoms are called an isotope of an atom. 
So there's no difference between them other than the fact that they have different masses. They have different masses because they have different number of neutrons. And we'll talk more about this in class. All right, heading over to the electron cloud. Um, keep in mind that it's the electron cloud is not actually a thing. It's more of a place, a region surrounding the nucleus where the electrons move. So it's not a thing. The electrons move incredibly fast. Um, this is part of your textbook reading, I think. But I mean, just it's, it's almost incomprehensible how fast they move. However, the patterns in which they move are, are unpredictable. They don't move in nice little orbits around the nucleus as if it were planets around the sun. It's not like that, although it used to be thought that that's what it was, but it's not like that at all. Um, very unpredictable patterns, zinging every which way. Because, that they, because they move really fast, and because they move in unpredictable patterns, the location of an electron cannot be known. However, what we can figure out is the probability of finding one in a certain place. Okay, we'll talk more about this probability thing as we go along. Um, the electron cloud remembers that whole region outside the nucleus. That electron cloud can then be subdivided into these things called energy levels. All right. Now, energy levels are areas within the electron cloud where electrons that have a certain amount of energy are more likely to be found. Just bear with me, keep up. It, I think it'll fall into place. The lowest energy levels are closest to the nucleus. So the electrons that have the least amount of energy are moving, generally speaking, a slower, and they're moving in a pattern in a region that's fairly close to the nucleus. Electrons that are farther away from the nucleus have more energy, they're moving faster, and they're found farther away. Okay. The, the problem is, and it's not a problem, but each energy level can only hold a specific number of electrons. So if there's more the electrons than can fit in the uh, lowest energy level, then those electrons that are left over have to go into a higher one. Um, and again, we'll continue to talk about this a bit. The energy levels then are subdivided into smaller regions called orbitals. And orbitals are cool. So what happens is that in an orbital, it's still an issue of probability, but you're more likely to find, or you have a greater probability of finding an electron in these specific orbitals within energy levels. But again, remember, it's not a specific path because you know that it doesn't just circle around the uh, nucleus. It's a region of probability. So again, it's not a thing. It's a place, and the place only exists because the probability of finding something there. Um, this is a key point to remember. Each orbital regardless of what energy level it's in, can only hold up to two electrons. It can hold one, but it can't hold any more than two. However, different energy levels have different numbers of orbitals. So if an energy level only has one orbital, how many electrons can it hold? Two, exactly. However, if an energy level has four orbitals, how many electrons can it hold? Right, it can hold up to eight. Um, and again, we'll talk about this a bit more. So let's take a look here. If you look right in the center of this diagram, um, you can see these very light colored, uh, to me they look purple and blue, circles. And those would represent the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus. Then the innermost, this sort of darker region here surrounding the nucleus is called the 1s orbital. Now, s orbitals are spherical. That's how I remember it. Um, whether that s actually stands for that, I don't know. But so the 1s orbital is 
this sort of darker, almost purpley region. Um, the 1 stands for the fact that it's in the first energy level, and the S stands for what kind of orbital it is. So it's in the first energy level, and it's an S, which means it's spherical. Now, it just so happens that the first energy level only has this one orbital. So the first energy level has one orbital, which means how many electrons can it hold up to? Right, two, because each orbital can hold up to two. All right, so now that's the first energy level. Let's move out to the second. So we have two things labeled with twos. We have a 2s orbital, which again is spherical, so you can see it this it's more red than the purple one. Um, it encompasses the 1s orbital, but it's this, this area, this region out here. So it's 2 because it's in the second energy level, and it's s because it's spherical. All right. Now, if you come over here to the right, you also have 2p orbitals. 2 meaning second energy level, p meaning they're a different shape. And the p orbitals are actually figure eights, and let me show you this. So let's start with this one here, and it comes down, goes through the center of the nucleus, comes around, and goes back. So that is one orbital, or p orbital. Then there's another p right here, okay, and another p right here. I'm not even sure if you can see what I'm doing, um, but anyway, so those are the that's the second energy level. It has one s orbital, and the second energy level has three p orbitals. The last thing they show in this diagram is the three s orbital, which is white. Um, there are also three p orbitals, um, but we're not going to go. It gets too confusing there. So anyway, this diagram shows the nucleus, a one s, a two s, and three s orbitals. In addition to, it shows the three two p orbitals. All right, electrons. They have a charge of negative 1, or as we go back to the protons, they have a relative charge of minus 1, so it exactly balances the charge, the positive charge on a proton. Um, another vocabulary word, a neutral atom has an equal number of electrons and protons because they balance each other out and therefore the atom becomes neutral. Okay. Another vocabulary word, ion. Atoms can lose or gain electrons. They can also have different numbers of neutrons, which we talked about. What they can't have are different numbers, or the, the atoms of the same element cannot have different numbers of protons, because protons determine what it is. So anyway, losing or gaining electrons happens all the time, and it causes the atom to become charged. Because remember, initially, the number of electrons and protons were the same. So if the electrons, if some of them leave, then it's going to have a charge. If it gets more, it's going to have a charge. So they're called ions. A charged particle is called an ion. Right? There's two things that there's two things that can happen to change the number of protons. You can gain, I mean, I'm sorry, see, I just said it. Gain electrons, change the number of electrons. You can gain electrons, which means you're bringing in more negative charges. So what you have is a negative ion called an anion. But you can also lose electrons, which means instead of being equal to the number of protons, now there are fewer electrons than there were, which means the number of positive charges is greater. It's a positive ion. It's called a cation. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a hint on how to remember that. All right, this is not on your packet, but I thought it was cool. Um, this is just, it's not a photograph exactly. It's taken with a piece of equipment that will that can actually show you these carbon atoms. And next year in bio, you'll study this a bit. You can see that the, these carbon atoms form this ring. Okay. And then if you go over, here's another one. And here's another one. And that's part of what makes carbon so important for life is that it can form these rings. And you'll do a lot of that next year in bio. Anyway, I found this picture. I just really liked it, so I put it in there. And so these are gold atoms on a graphite base. And remember, graphite is carbon. Now, why these are lined up instead of in the circle form, hmm, I do not know. Uh, but I thought this was kind of cool. All right, so um, make a note of things you have questions on or things that you didn't understand. Bring these questions to class on Thursday, and we'll review part of this packet. 
So thanks for listening and I'll see you later.